Today, I'm gonna to show you how to check pointers at runtime and prevent your programs from crashing. Hey everybody, I know you hate bad pointers and seg faults. Some of you just hate pointers, period, and you shouldn't. Please work on that. You really need to make peace with pointers, but most programmers do legitimately hate seg faults. So today I wanna to take a closer look at seg faults and show you a little hack that actually you can use to detect whether a pointer is one of those pointers that's about to crash your program. And of course, we are going to get into code in this tutorial. All the source code from my videos is available through Patreon. Thank you all for supporting this channel. And I know that some of you may not be familiar with seg faults. You may not know what I'm talking about. Maybe you've seen the message when one of your programs crash, but you don't really understand what's going on or what that even means. So hopefully today I can add a little bit of clarity. So a seg fault is simply when you try to access a spot in memory that isn't mapped. Your process hasn't requested that memory, it doesn't have access to that part of its memory space, but you try to access it anyway, and when you do, boom, your program crashes. This is almost always due to a bad pointer in your program. Basically, you get an address messed up, it's corrupted, it's null, it's, it's a value that you didn't intend, and then you try to dereference that pointer, and things go bad. And over the years, I've had a lot of students ask me if there isn't some way that they could check their pointers just because they don't like getting that segmentation fault message. Instead, they'd like to be able to check the pointer and see if it's bad rather than seeing their program crash. And for years, my answer has been, don't do that. Just fix your code so that it doesn't generate bad pointers. Because if you don't produce bad pointers, you're not going to have seg faults. And for what it's worth, that advice still holds. Regardless of what I show you today, the best approach to avoiding seg faults is simply to write correct code. Use tests, be careful, use asserts, basically write code that doesn't produce bad pointers. But okay, say you don't subscribe to this philosophy, say that you don't like good, clean, correct code, or say you're writing a library that's going to be used by sloppy, careless programmers, and you don't trust them, and so you would rather actually return an error rather than just crashing the program when they pass you a bad pointer. Whatever your reason, that's our challenge for today, is how do you do that? How do you avoid the crash and return an error instead? So that's our challenge for today, let's jump into the code. Okay, so for this example, let's just start with a really simple program, and I'm going to create a pointer, let's call it junk, that makes sense, and let's just assign it to something that we know we can access, something like null. Okay, so then if we try to assign some integer value to that memory location. This should do the trick. So we compile it, we run it, and sure enough, we get a segmentation fault. This is pretty simple. All I did is I had a pointer that wasn't gonna work because it's not mapped. Null is not a valid address for a process to access, so this code gives me a segmentation fault. Now, what I'd like to do is to find some way to check this pointer before I try to use it to see if it's any good. Okay, so for this example, I'm just gonna make a quick little example function called testPTR that's going to test a pointer. Now, to this, I'm gonna pass in a void pointer because I just care about the address. I don't care what type it is. I'm also gonna pass in the number of bytes because every time you access memory, you're not just accessing the starting address. Typically, you're accessing a range of bytes at that address, and so we wanna pass in the number of bytes that we wanna check. So we're actually checking a range of memory locations and then I'm gonna pass in a name. And this is just so that, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print out the status of each of these pointers. So I'm going to print out the name of this pointer along with the address of the pointer. And so that'll give us a little more insight into what's going on. So this function, we're just gonna have a printf and we'll print out the name. And let's also print out its status which we haven't figured out yet. And then I also wanna print out the address that we're actually trying to access, that'll be handy. Okay, now for status here, this is sort of the thing we're trying to get at. Now, what would be really nice is if we had some kind of function called, let's say it's called is mapped, and you could pass in a pointer and a number of bytes, and it would return true if it's mapped, 
meaning that it's not going to seg fault, or false if it is not mapped and it's going to give me a problem. And it makes sense. This seems like something that you'd want to do. So you think surely a function like this exists and that would be really nice and it would make sense and I wish it were true. If it is, I haven't found that function. So if you know of one that does this, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. But there are a few ways that we can get at this information. Okay, so the first is if I were on Linux, I could look at the proc file system, which tells us what blocks of memory are mapped for this process. And from there, we can check to see if our pointer is in one of those mapped regions. So we can do some math to figure out if it's mapped or unmapped. I've looked a little bit at also some different tools like VM map and PMAP that allow you to see your address space and what is mapped and what isn't. So that would work, but it's fairly involved and it isn't going to be very portable. Some of these tools are only available on Linux. Some are only available on Mac. For example, my Mac doesn't have a proc file system. So this isn't a very satisfying solution. We could also handle the sig seg v signal, which is sent to a process whenever a seg fault occurs, but that's not quite the same thing. That's basically handling a crash. We want to determine whether a pointer is safe before we try to use it. We're not trying to detect that it was unsafe and that we're about to crash and try to recover. That's a separate thing that we could try to do. It's a little more complicated and maybe it's something that we'll get to in a future video. But for today, I wanna to detect the pointer is bad beforehand. Okay, so our third option, and that's the one we're going to use today, is we're basically going to trick the operating system, the kernel, into checking this pointer for us. Now, let me show you how this works. Let's take a quick look at a man page for a random system call. Let's look at open, that should do the trick. Okay, now if I look at the man page for open and if you look down, way down here in the error handling section, you'll notice this eFault error code. And this is gonna be really helpful. EFault is returned anytime the path name points outside your accessible address space. And that's exactly what we're trying to find out, right? So we could pass in the pointer we want to check into open and then see if we get an eFault error back. But there is a problem with that. There are a lot of other things that could go wrong. And if my pointer points to a file name, then open's actually going to do something. It's going to have side effects. It's going to open up a file and I don't want to open up a file. I just want to check a pointer. So what we need is a system call that does this eFault check that returns eFault if we are going to segfault if we have a bad pointer, but doesn't have any annoying side effects. And here today, I want to show you one way to do it. Okay, so let's come back to our code and let's create this is mapped function. Like I said before, we're going to pass in a void pointer and we're going to pass in the number of bytes that we want to access. Just for simplicity, because it's such a common case, let's check whether our pointer is null and we'll return zero. That's a really quick check. And often you will see null pointers. And so we might as well check that as a special case. But now what I'm gonna do, cause what about the other cases? What about other bad pointers that aren't null? Well, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use pipes. I'm going to create a pipe here, okay? And the pipe isn't really gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna communicate with anything. We've talked about pipes in other videos. I'll link to those in the description in case you're wondering. But simply what I'm gonna do is create two endpoints. So this is a array of length two. These are gonna be two file descriptors. They're gonna be the read end and the write end of my pipe. And then we can just call pipe FD. And what that's gonna do is create a new pipe because I need something that I can write to. I want something that I can actually try a pointer out on, but that's not gonna have any side effects. And so this pipe I'm gonna create, it's basically, it is a communication mechanism, but it doesn't go anywhere, right? I'm not gonna actually do anything with it. So I'm just gonna create this pipe and I'm going to try to write to it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to write to the second element in this array. That's actually the right end. So the read end is the first one. And I'm going to write from the pointer, I'm gonna write the bytes from the pointer that we passed in. And I'm going to also tell it to write the number of bytes that I wanted to check into this pipe, okay? So remember, it's a pipe going nowhere, so there's no side effects. And I'm just gonna check to see if there's an error, if there is an error, and if that error is eFault. Now at this point, I need some kind of value here. So I'm gonna say, so let's make a result variable valid. We'll start it out as one, so it is valid. But if we see this, then we say valid is zero. So valid is not, it's not valid. And then we're gonna exit. 
And then at the end, the reason I didn't just return there is we also need to close our pipe. Otherwise, this could produce a resource leak. So let's just close both ends of our pipe and we will return valid. So hopefully this all makes sense. We are creating a pipe. This pipe is a pipe that doesn't go anywhere. We just needed something we could write to. So we create this new pipe. It's a temporary means to an end. And then we're going to try to write to it. We're going to write from this pointer the number of bytes we care about. So that is going to cover our whole block. And if we end up running outside of our valid memory space, meaning we would get a seg fault if we tried to pull this off under different circumstances rather than a write system call, then we would get a seg fault. Okay, so now let's go back down to main and let's try this out with a few different addresses. Okay, so let's make a, another integer pointer. Let's make this a block of 50 bytes. Just for completeness, let's say we want a pointer to an address that's on the stack like this. And let's come up and make one more junk pointer because we'll call this junk two because we're trying to check whether or not we can actually detect seg faults that aren't just null pointers because we had that check up here. We have a, a null right here. We wanna check whether this part of the code works. And so we need something that's actually gonna try that out. So let's just make our own custom address in here. This is the fun of working in C is you can do stuff like this. We can just make a pointer. Okay, so now I have a bunch of pointers. Let's just come down and let's just try out our test pointer function. So let's just try the first one. We'll just try one byte accessing at null. So that's our, our original junk. Let's try our second one, junk two. So in both these cases, you notice that I'm just passing in one byte. And so this is just gonna check one byte. Just, we're really just checking that address that we're trying to access. But then let's also look at some of these bigger blocks. For example, we wanna test out you now PX. That's gonna be the size of an integer. Uh, looks like I typed too quickly, forgot my quotes. Since these are supposed to be names. And then let's also get pointer P in here. And it is also size of an int. That's not a size of an int. It's gonna be size 50, okay, 50 bytes, because that's what I allocated. So we'll check all 50 bytes there. Okay, so let's see how this works. So now if I come back in here and compile it, good, no errors. And if we run it, let's just look really quick at what we got. Okay, so you notice it's successfully detecting that null is not valid, it's not mapped, um, but you notice that it's also able to catch junk two. So this just random address that I created, totally nonsensical, clearly not mapped, and it detects it. Okay, so it detects that that's a problem, but PX, just fine, P, just fine, no problem. So you can see here that sure enough, we are able to predict the seg fault causing pointers. Now note that this is not going to fix all memory errors. It's not, for example, going to detect heap corruption bugs or double freeze or anything other than seg faults, but it will allow you to detect seg faults before they occur. Okay, so now that you know how to do this, should you? No, probably not. This is a fun and interesting exercise. It is fun to see how you can use something like a pipe, which was designed for communication between processes or within a process. It's fun to see how that can be used as a way to check for seg faults and check your pointers. But checking pointers like this is going to be really, really slow. Notice that to do this just involved probably at least four different system calls in order to check one memory access. If you do this a lot in your programs to check pointers, you should expect things to get much, much slower. And like I said at the beginning, the right answer is almost always just write correct code, write clean code, write correct code. But maybe, just maybe, there is that one case where you need to handle pointers that you don't trust and crashing really just isn't an option. So when that case happens, now you know how to solve it. So you're welcome. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos if you found this helpful. Even if you didn't, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my next one. And until then, I'll see you later.